Hi everybody and welcome to another video in our Figma course. In this video we're going to be looking at the auto layout feature. I'm going to give you an introduction and we're going to create some buttons like some website buttons using the auto layout feature. It's really powerful and it's a little bit complicated so we're going to dive right into that. Let's get started. So I've already created a frame so go ahead and create a new frame. I've called this one lesson 11. And the first thing that we want is a text element. So hitting T on the keyboard, we'll select the text tool, or you can click it right up here. And just click anywhere on your frame, and you can start typing in. I'm just going to call this button. I have my font set on Roboto Black at 64 points. I'm going to line it up here in the center. And then you can right-click and choose Add Auto Layout from this menu, or you can just press Shift A as it shows you the shortcut key right there. And it won't really look like too much happened here, but we've got some extra features over here in our inspector panel. By default, it's added an auto layout with a horizontal direction, and that's what we want for this button. To really see what's happening here, we can add a stroke to our new auto layout. And you can see over here in our layers panel, what it's done is created a new frame. This is a very special frame that will allow content inside of it to flow and resize the frame depending on the content that you put inside of it. So if we change the text, our button will change sizes as we put in content. So essentially we're creating a dynamic element and that's what's great about the auto layout feature for creating dynamic elements. So I've added a stroke. Let's put this on the outside and let's give it a width of maybe four. And we can give it some rounded corners right up here. Let's do maybe like six. That's a nice rounded button right there. And if I select it over here, we can see the auto layout settings right up here. And we can open this up where it says alignment and padding. And we can get some extra control over how our content inside of our auto layout frame is positioned and how it's spaced inside of this auto layout frame. I'm going to put it right in the center and then I'm going to add some extra padding on the left and the right. I'm going to double it to 20 on each side. Gives us a little bit more breathing room there. That looks pretty good. Now let's clone another one. So alt drag, holding down alt, click and drag, create a new copy. And this one I'm going to add a fill by default it's white so we can change the color. I'll make it purple. And let's change our text. We can get it right here from the selection colors. We can change our text here. I'm going to make it white. And I'm going to take off the stroke. Just hit the little minus icon right there. Take off the stroke. And then I'm going to add an effect. By default, it adds a drop shadow. I like that. Nice and subtle drop shadow. So there was we have two different kinds of buttons. Now, I want to show you in here, if I hold control, I can select inside of a frame. So holding control, you can target inside of a frame and get the text element. I'm going to double click and I can rename this now and you'll see what happens here. The button will automatically resize. So I'm going to say link. And if we wanted this to resize from the center, I can select my frame. You can do it over here in the layers panel or you can just click on the object. And I can say constraints and resizing. I want that to be in the center. I can just click twice and it will resize from the center. So now if I click on this and say, click here, you can see how this automatically extends our frame and keeps our padding that we assigned to our auto layout. So I loved using the auto layout for buttons and for dynamic content for elements that you want to automatically expand or shrink depending on what kind of content you add in there. Now, what we can do is add other elements inside of our button. So let's create a basic shape. I'm going to choose the polygon from right up here. I'm just going to draw out a triangle holding shift to get an equilateral triangle. And then I'm going to hold shift again and hover over the corner to rotate. And I'm going to rotate it so that it's pointing to the right. And then I'm going to flatten this. You can right click and choose flatten or just press control E on your keyboard and that will flatten it. And I want to resize this, but I want to do it proportionately. So I'm going to click my little 
chain or a lock icon right here and give it a height of, let's give it a height of 40. So it's a little smaller. And now I can pull this into my auto layout. So as I drag over my button, you can see how I, I get these, these small blue guides, these little lines here. And I can either put it on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. And see how it now, again, automatically extends my button size. My proportions are still locked. And let's make that 20. So I get a little bit smaller arrow. I can click outside now and then reselect my auto layout frame, select my button here. And you can also control right here, the spacing between items. I can just click and drag and you can see how this is behaving. It's giving me a little bit more space in between the different pieces of content that I have inside my button. So I think maybe 30 would be nice. And maybe I'll adjust my padding as well, bump that up to 30. So we have 30 pixels on the outside and we have 30 pixels in between the content inside the button. That's a nice balanced looking web element now. I have my text set to uppercase. If you didn't want that, just click on the little minus or it will behave as you type it. Now we can style this button however we want. Maybe we want to have more like a pill shaped button so we can just bump up the corner radius nice and big here and get this really cool friendly kind of button with nice rounded corners. I'm going to alt drag a duplicate again and I can just take my corner radius back to zero. We have a nice blocky kind of button here. And now I'm going to drag in this little magnifying glass icon into my second button and delete the triangle. I'll make that magnifying glass white as well and change my text to search now. And now we've got a search button. I'll have the I'll have the magnifying glass as well as a few more bonus icons on my site. So make sure you check the link in this video. Using some of our other techniques that we've learned in this course, we can also give this some more style by giving it a linear gradient and maybe choosing a different color here. So we have this more bluish purple and it goes up to this lighter purple here. Let's also add a stroke and let's put it on the inside. Let's make it the same purple, but we're going to change the blending mode here to color dodge. And I'll increase my radius here. So we have a little bit of an outline there on the outside. And for this one, let's give it a corner radius of eight. Now I just want to show you a little bit more power when it comes to the auto layout feature. And to do this, I'm just going to use basic shapes to try to illustrate this idea a little bit better. So let's use some rectangles. I'm just going to draw some rectangles here and I'll give them a color. And then I'll duplicate them. So I have four rectangles now. Now I'll select all of my rectangles and then press shift A to put these into an auto layout. And what we can do now is control the spacing between our items very precisely and very quickly. By default now, it's given me a vertical layout. As you can see here, I can change this to a horizontal and it will change it to a horizontal. I'm going to leave it vertical for now. And let's make the spacing between these 30. Let's open our padding and sizing again. I'll put this in the center as well and give it a, a padding here of 30 all the way around. Now, if you want to have uniform padding, you can just type it in right here without having to open up this properties window. But if you want to have different padding, especially with text, I like to have a little bit more padding on the left and the right versus the top and the bottom. It just looks a little bit nicer. Now we can give this a fill color and we'll change it from white to a different color. And if we look over here in our layers panel, we can see that again, this has created a special frame inside of our document frame here. And I'm just going to give these squares specific colors here so that we can see a little bit better what we're actually playing with. What I can do is reorder these in a very fast and easy way, and it will automatically place them inside of my auto layout without having to worry about getting everything lined up or keeping it 
centered, etc. I can just quickly reorder these and you can see what's happening over here in the layers panel as I reorder these. This is a really fast way of creating elements that are dynamic and keep all of your spacing and alignment secure and precise. So we could use this to create lists. So I'll create just a basic list here with the text again. I'm going to put item 01. I'll clone this holding Alt. I'll drag it down. Rename this to 2. One more. And I'll call this one 03. Let's put these into an auto layout now. Shift A. And again, I can reorder these on the fly very quickly now that they are in an auto layout. It's a special kind of group or frame that contains these specific items. What we can also do is have auto layouts nested inside auto layouts, which is really cool. So let's say I wanted to use this little triangle. I'm going to, and let's, I'll select my first item here and paste it. And it's pasted it with the exact spacing that I had before in my auto layout. Let's make it black so we can see it. And I don't want it like that. I want it to be in a nested auto layout. So I can press Shift A again with the arrow and item one selected. And I'll change it from a vertical to a horizontal direction. Let's open up our uh, alignment and padding settings and make sure this is on left center. And now what I can do is duplicate this item now. It's a nested frame inside of another auto layout frame. So when I duplicate it, I'm going to double click to get inside of this frame and control D to duplicate it. We'll rename this one. If you double click a couple of times, you'll get into the text. Duplicate it again. And you can see as I duplicate these, it also automatically positions them right where I want. Let's make our spacing here a little smaller. I'll go to 10 pixels. Holding control and shift, I can select all of my text items and I'm gonna make these a little bit smaller, maybe 48, that's a little bit better. And you can see I can have independent spacing in here. If I want to make this, I want to make this um, 30. I'll select the next one, make this 30, 30. There we go. So this kind of thing, the auto layout is great for lists and for dynamic content. If I change this to something different here, the text to something different, I'll type in something a little bit longer and you can see that my first um, auto layout will keep the distance between the text and the arrow. Now this is still all inside of an auto layout. So it keeps that arrow right where I want it. And if I changed any of the other content in here, it will continue expanding or shrinking the entire auto layout as I add more content. So let me give it a background here and we'll increase the padding all the way around it to 30. And I'll give it a, just a gray background for now. So you can actually see what this is doing. If I wanna change this back to item one, there we go. So we've used the auto layout feature to create some buttons that we could use for a website and some lists. Now it's up to you to use this in a creative way. I'm gonna show you more about the auto layout feature in videos coming up, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.